Hi there and welcome again to another one of these videos and I struggle with you know what to call it you know Pete had to call it a vox box but I googled vox box I don't really know what vox box is so I'm just going to go with courier collaboration so welcome to another courier collaboration but before we start I want to have a little quick shout out to Mick at Night and Day Couriers I met him on Thursday down in Birmingham great great lad gave me a load and I took it up to Scotland and one of the things I quite like, he's very particular about how he has his deliveries done. They want to be done in this way and they want to be delivered at this time. And he stressed that over and over again. And you know what? I like that. And I would like more shippers to be like that. This is how it has to be done and no exceptions. So that was great. So cheers, Mick. Lovely to meet you. Hope things go really well and hope to work for you again. So moving on, what was this week's, this week's, this month's, this edition's question? Well, it was about taking your experience you know what would you recommend if someone walks up to you and says hey guys you do a courier job what van do you recommend i get so the question is what van would you recommend and why would you recommend that van now read seeing some of the uh, the input was great and i loved it first off we're going to go and see tall man small van now his experience is prolific because he's had more vans than anyone i know of with the exception of Chris from London, who we'll get to down at the very end. He's a prolific van buyer and user. So, John, over to you. Hello, Neil. The question that you've asked is, <clears throat> what would I advise the best van to be for people starting out with no prior knowledge? And I'm going to be very biased in this one, and I'm going to say a small van. Reasons being, they're cheap to run, insure, maintain, um, they've got very good MPG. You don't have to have a massive initial outlay to be able to buy one and run one. There's a good amount of work out there for them. The stuff that you'll be transporting is small and relatively inexpensive. Um, you have quick offload and unload times. You have quick turnaround times with jobs. And I just, in my opinion, it's a very good way to be able to cut your teeth in an industry like this, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of benefits to running bigger vans as well. Um, but I would say I'm always of the opinion that you should sort of start in a small van and then work your way up, or you stay in a small van, as I'm choosing to do now. Really, um, yeah, you have the ability to earn more in larger vans, but there's also other caveats with that in the sense of you're transporting bigger, larger items, which you do have to have a different driving style and attitude towards. And there's also with things like uh, with Lutons and like bigger vans, you've got to know how to load them. You've got to know how to distribute weight evenly over them. You've got to know how to be able to strap things down properly and secure things properly, which not everyone knows when they're new. And you've got to be able to know what to bid for them, you know. You've got to be able to secure work at the major. You've got to be able to secure the vast majority of your work being a bigger van work if you're running a bigger van, because otherwise you're going to be running at a loss, really. So, yeah, that's my opinion. Starting from the bottom and working your way up. See you later, mate. Thanks for that, John. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to, at the end, you know, my opinion is going to come out, and I don't think we're going to be too far apart. Anyway, we're going to pop along and we'll see the Saintsman and see what he's got to bring to the party this time. Hello, Neil. It's Dave, the Saintsman, small van driver on the CX. Got my own channel. If anyone wants to subscribe, it'll be really good. Over 500 subscribers. I drive a small van. Uh, I've been on it two years. I've got a Citroen Bilingo, um, standard size, not the long wheelbase. And... I started with a Vauxhall Combo because that's the van I had before I joined the CX, which I just, so I didn't have to buy one, but upgraded to the newer Bilingo, and that's what I use. And I'm from Northampton, and I can make enough money for myself to drive a small van. Love it. It's easy to get around. It's nippy. I'm very tempted to go to a larger van, uh, but the more outgoings, and I get nearly 60, I get between 55 and 60 per gallon on this I would be tempted to get a dispatch, a Citroen dispatch after this, which is slightly bigger and it brings in a bit more um, 
it brings small wheel base work into it as well so you got more work out there but i've been doing okay i'll either get a dispatch or i'll get a longer bilingo an l2 because they're slightly bigger in the back because i tramp as well and it's more room but i can't say about big vans guys make a bit more money but i haven't got the outgoing so i haven't got a kids at home i haven't got a mortgage i'm nearly 60 i know i don't look it but hey what can you do i'm almost 60 and it suits me fine hope you're all doing okay cheers now yeah Ta-da. thanks for that dave and you know i'm gonna say you know i think you know if you're gonna start out why not start out the easy way you know driving the small van is like driving a car you can park it in the same places as a car you can get in and out you can grab your packages you can get on your way great way to cut your teeth and some would say it's just the way to go because there's so much small van work out there. I like it. Now we're off to see Andy P, a short wheelbase driver. What do you think, Andy? Hi, Neil. Hope you're well. Hope everyone else is well out there. So you're asking me the question, which size van do I think is the best to run on the CX? Um, so anyone that watches my channel, and if you don't watch my channel, Andy P, CX driver, Please like and subscribe. Um, I, I I run a, a short wheelbase, and I'm based in the Manchester area. So there's there's quite a bit of work around Manchester, as a lot of you will probably know. Um, but a lot of the work that I see is actually small van work. A small van for me is is very good if you want to do multiple jobs, smaller jobs. Um, throughout the day. And there are jobs that go further afield. I mean, look at Saints Man, he's an he's a absolute legend when it comes to small van. Um, but short wheelbase van does work for me. I like the size of the van. It's not too big. I can fit two pallets in it. And it's, it's, it's just a good size if you're, you know, I can take it through the car wash, for example, if I'm in a smaller place or I need to maneuver it around the car park, I can do. I can get on the height barriers. Um, so it's good from that point of view and it gives me options but I would say probably the best van to run is a long wheelbase and the reason I say that is because you can only earn so much money in a small van and a short wheelbase if you've got a long wheelbase you've got more options so if I'm from Manchester and I travel down to, to Bristol or London and somewhere further afield in a long wheelbase then I've got options for Short wheelbase, um, small van, medium waist, medium wheelbase vans. I've got options to get back. So I just think it opens up the horizon to what jobs you can get on the CX. And also you can charge more per mile. So I think from a financial point of view, it's, it's probably the best van to run. And when I decide to change, it's probably the next van I will probably look at. Hope that helps. Take care. Hi, Andy. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Absolutely fantastic. And I think, you know, yeah, it's, it's totally a valid point. You know, you're, you're in an area where, you know, you could really monopolize on that. What I certainly find is when I travel away from my home location, and yeah, I've got more options to come back. Sometimes I'm coming back on a small van job and I'm taking a bit of a hit on that, but it's better than running back empty. So yeah, the bigger the vehicle, uh, the more your options are. So next we're going to go and see Mr. Pete, the courier driver. Hello, Neil. It's Pete, the courier driver here. How you doing, mate? So the question, what is the best van to buy as a newbie courier driver? Well, in my humble opinion, I would say the best one you can. I've always gone Luton with a curtain with a tail lift. It's the best van you can run on the exchange. Strong arguments have been made for small vans. But I would say sometimes the van jumps out at you. So what, have a budget. I don't think you need to spend too much dough on a van, particularly if you haven't got your own contracts and stuff like that. It's a big risk to take. Put away the best, the most money you can afford and then get yourself a tidy little van you know, have a look in the local area, have an idea of what you think you might like, and then have a look around, and what might happen is you go, well, I really want um, a Mercedes V, oh, and then hang on a second, there's a Citra around the corner, okay, it's not the Merc, but it's done half the miles, it's brand spanking new, it's got all the bits and pieces, and it's cheap. The truth of the matter is, 
the van will jump out at you. It will go, here I am. And then you know which one to go for. That's my advice. So uh, hope you're all well out there, guys. Hope you are taking care and taking money. Hi, Pete. Thanks for that. And I like the fact that it's another method of a maybe a similar opinion. You know, you've always gone on about, you know, curtain, looting, tail lift. And that was your life for a long time. But you've now had other people say, you look, the small van model is also a good model. You know, any of these models could actually work for you. So I love that and I appreciate it. And thanks again for contributing, Pete. I'll catch you next time. Now we're off to see Phil. Now Phil and I have been chatting for as long as we've both been using the CX and he recently went to an L2 Doblo. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, YouTube. Happy Sunday morning, just having a brew. Neil, you asked me to make a video on what van I'd recommend for somebody new. I'd probably go small van or midi. Cheaper to buy, cheaper to run. If it doesn't work out, you've not laid as much out. Also, I think it's probably better to start with small van and work your way up. I don't know. I started with the Vivaro and worked my way down. I had a short wheelbase, found most of the work I was doing was for small van. Um, so I went down to a midi-sized van, which I think is probably the best of both worlds. I still do a lot of short wheelbase work. Uh, and I obviously do a lot of small van work. Uh, and also, quite often, I'll turn up on a job that's booked for a small van and it's too big to go in a small van. I had one last week where small van job, one box, when I got there, the box were two meters long, but it fitted in the midi van, no problem. So that's good. So yeah, I would definitely go midi van. If not, I'd go small van. The advantage of the midi van is it costs no more probably to buy or to run or maintain than a small van, but you can do short wheelbase work. Anyway, hope that's okay for you, Neil. Catch up with you next week. Catch you later, mate. Bye-bye. Thanks for that, Phil. And, you know, I'm going to say, you know, the more I sort of think about it, the more I look at it and I hear the other opinions, you know, I want to be in the big van because I feel, I feel, you know, but maybe that's just a personality thing. But when the numbers stack up, you know, the small van model seems to be winning through with the opinions of the guys. Now, is that just because of the people that I speak to are maybe more small van people? But I love the fact that the L2 Doblo, you know, as you've said, the maintenance is the same, the... Um, fuel economy is the same and you can get that extra stuff in and you've turned up to jobs and you've gone that wouldn't fit in a small van but it's my job and I'm going to get it on and I'm going to go so yeah ah, small vans looking like the number one contender here isn't it there, now we're off to speak to Alex from Bridlington now this is Alex's uh, first appearance on the channel and Bridlington that's a tough gig that's out there in the east coast how do you do it Alex Hi Neptune, sorry about the shocking lighting, I'm on Bridlington Seafront, I'm not in the van, I'm in my car, I'm waiting to pick the missus up, um, but I thought I'd do a quick video for your next YouTube video. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy watching him, I watch you, the Saints man, he makes me laugh. Neil's got me one on for tomorrow morning, brilliant. <laughs> and when I, I've started watching uh, that big guy, what's his name? Anvil, he's had trouble with his van, you've had trouble with your van. Touch wood up to now, I know it's going to happen to everybody. We've not had any trouble with ours. And it's a Citroen Bilingo, small, oh, XL, slightly bigger than the normal small van Citroen Bilingo. Up to now, it's been fantastic. But it's not ideal for every situation. I mean, the best van you could possibly get is if you've already got a van, that one. If it's in good condition and you can rely on it, start off with that. Keep the costs down early, would be my opinion. I've only been going since May, so I'm a newcomer, really. Um... My business partner, he was stuck in Aberdeen on Friday. He took a job up from, I think, Leeds to Aberdeen. Um, tramped out Thursday night. He did fortunately get a job down to Glasgow. So he got halfway home to Bridlington, but he couldn't get anything from Glasgow. I think if he had a bigger van, he would have got something down south from Glasgow. So in those situations, a bigger van is definitely better than a small van because you're limited to what you can get. But small van's really convenient. You can park it everywhere. A lot of the jobs are just small boxes, letters, a little pallet. It's a lot easier in a small van, I would think, uh, than a, a big one. But I think if we're in a bad area, really. We're on the East Coast. Like, my job for Monday morning, I've got to go all the way to York. So I'm going 40 miles for uh, pickup, and it's all dead miles. So it swings and roundabouts. <laughs> anyway, thanks for asking my opinion. Sorry about the lighting. There you go, it's a little bit dark now, but that's Brillington Seafront in November. Can't really see anything. 
Right, I hope the video goes well. Speak to you soon. Keep on taking money, everybody. That's the name of the game. And thank you for that, Alex. And I think you're you're spot on as well. You know, if you are starting your business and you're a bit unsure, or even unsure, you're just going to start your business. But you know, if you've got a van, use that van. <laughs> it's definitely going to be cheaper than anything else. But you're right; it has to be something that you can rely on. And um, you know, I like the way that you mentioned how you and your business partner run the business. You, know, you do a, a week in and a week out. What a great way to do it! And um, gives you that time to recuperate, and then you can really go and smash it. And Bridlington, yeah, I'm afraid I had to look it up on Google to see where it was. <laughs> and yeah, what a tough gig to go all that way. Hopefully sometimes, like me, occasionally a job pops up local and you can jump right on that. Anyway, next up, we're going to go and see Tom at TG Logistics, a short wheelbase guy. Hello, Neil. Thank you very much for getting me back on the channel. Uh, little plug, I'm going Jersey. Check that out next week. What an adventure that's going to be. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> so what size of van to start the CX? Um, there's so many variables and as a certain courier, Pete, you do you. Um, and it's actually him that, I was always gonna get a loot when I started, loot and loot and tail lift, loot and took down everything, loot and. But then he did a video on small vans. And basically said that you can make money in a small van. So I was like, yeah, it's a lot more cost effective than a startup. So I got, I started with a small van. And it came a turning point with the small van. I was in Norwich, which is not a good area. And I went onto the uh, mobile and you could put search loads coming up and I went up to short wheelbase. That was a short wheelbase job going from Norwich to half an hour from home. And I was like, I'm really putting me range of jobs I can get like there. So I went to get a short wheelbase, which opened it up. Similar costs, some pens per mile is a pens per mile. The fuel consumption is a bit different, but I think the variety of jobs you can pick up and it's comfier to drive a short wheelbase. There's a lot of small vans on here, I know, but it's quite comfy in a, in a van more than like a car drive van. So I go short wheelbase, uh, less hassle with loads. I know you have to use straps and stuff, but it's obviously smaller. You don't get as big a loads as a large van and the running costs are lower than a large van. Obviously prices are lower, but short wheelbase, short wheelbase you can still get one pound a mile or more. So yeah, short, in short, short wheelbase. Thanks, Neil. I hope everyone has a good week. You know, Tom, I appreciate that. It, it's a good rundown because, you know, you started in a small van, moved to a short wheelbase. And, you know, is it the fact that I watched your videos and made that same decision or did it come to me organically in the same way that, you know, I started in a small van and I did great in the small van and I really like my small van and, you know, I kind of miss my small van sometimes a little bit. But I'm loving the short wheelbase and, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, it's definitely you got to be careful. And now we're off to speak to Dave, Anvil Logistics. What do you think, Dave? Hi, Neil. And hello, everyone there out there in YouTube land. What van would I recommend to people? Well, seeing as at the moment I'm driving a, sh a small van, which is a higher van, because my uh, own van, which is a long wheelbase, is off the road. I've got to say... I would still recommend a long wheelbase van. And the reason for that is I found there's not much room in a small van for a start for all your gear. And you're very, very much restricted as to what you can actually do. You can only do small van work. Whereas when you have a long wheelbase van, you've got all that extra room, obviously, to stow all your gear. You get a better rate per mile when you work. And you can also do other work. So you've got the choice. You can do small van work, medium wheelbase work, long wheelbase work. So when you're in an area and you want to get back home, for example, you can quite happily bid for a small van job, which would get you where you want to go. Whereas if, as I found, you're in an area in a small van 
and it would seem that all the work coming out was medium wheelbase and long wheelbase. I know it always seems like that when things are going against you, but that is the reason why I would choose a long wheelbase van. You don't get as good mile per gallon, but you do get a higher rate anyway. And I just think the choice of what you can do is wider. So that's it for me. It's uh, long wheelbase all the way. Take care, everyone. Cheers. Thanks for that, Dave. And it, it is interesting because, you know, for you, going from the long wheelbase down to the small van and then finding all the, the little things that don't quite work for, for you in the small van. And I do know that we've spoken several times and you've said you felt that when you're quoting on small van work in your long wheelbase, you were saying you feel the shipper goes, yeah, but he's in a big van, so we'll give him a slightly more money which is interesting if that is actually how shippers work. And I hope that is the case. Anyway, it's fantastic. So long wheelbase for you. And I really hope you get your van back real soon. All the best. Thanks again. Cheers, buddy. And now we're off to see my good friend, Mark, from down Bristol. I won't do the accent. I don't want to be offensive. So Mark is a small van guy and he's got a great outlook to how he runs his business. Hi, YouTube. I'm Neil. I hope everybody's well. Neil has asked me to do a quick video of why I chose the van I chose. Well, obviously, I think it's different for every single person, um, your circumstances. I actually chose um, to drive a small van purely and simply because in the past I've driven lorries and they're nothing but a pain in the ass, to be fair. Parking and weight limits. I just wanted to, just wanted to make it as easy as possible. Um, I suppose, as the, Pete the Courier would say, I'm more of an Uncle Albert than uh, than probably most of you. Not completely, but I'm more along those lines than um, than anything else. So I know I'm at a certain age now as well. I don't really need to earn loads and loads of money. So um, that's probably the main reasons I chose a small van, just purely for convenience. And is a lot more fun to drive around than a bigger van. Now, I think if I was a young man starting on the CX, I would choose a, a bigger van because you can earn more money. Um, you've got far more options. Um, you can take any load, within reason, of course. Um, rather than just the loads, I, I'm limited to what I can take. Um, obviously, if there's if back loads. Um, I can only choose small van work, whereas if you've got a bigger van, you've got m many, many more options. Yeah, so the reason, that's the reasons I've chose what I've chose. It suits me uh, down to the ground. Um, but again, it's all about your personality, your time of your life, how much money you want to earn. Um, yeah, so um, that, that's my reasons. You know, Mark, um, I really think that it's it's such good knowledge and information to pass on that you've got this wealth of experience you've been in the vehicles you've decided the small van and the small van is the one for you and i think i think it's tremendous and you know i've got to say i kind of agree you know if you're gonna start you know, start small don't risk everything you've got at the start unless you've got that vehicle in which case go for it thank you very much mark looking forward to chatting to you later on in the week so now we're going to go and i'm going to have got one to read out this week and i'm going to have to glance down at my phone to read um, through where it is and it's from a guy who I speak to an awful lot Chris from London now uh, Chris says um, as you know I'm a Bilingo devotee he's had several Bilingos over the years uh, six vans in 11 years so that kind of shows you this is a guy who is absolutely committed to doing the job and has realized that every two years you need to change your van so here's another business thing you've got to factor in you've got to factor in how many miles you're going to do, how much money you're going to make and how much money you need to put aside. You can't just hope that it will be okay. But what he says is the new, the new K9 version from 2019 with the 1.5 HDI engine has issues. And I learned that. I learned that hard. Uh, my experience and yours, Neil, is that they don't seem to last much past 110k. And we're talking about the engine here. The rest of the van is seems to me to be pretty solid. 
uh, before they give up and then give you big problems then you're stuck with reliability issues so that's something that the PSA group need to look into my words not Chris's anyway this has changed my thinking now for a newbie I would suggest go and get a 1.6 HDI Berlingo that's the one that I've had in the past it's good for 300k and it does great miles per gallon half of his 1.6 HDI, HDI vans have been serviced by him with the exception of the timing belt and emissions um, and they've all given great service. If splashing on, out on a new van, I think that the soon to be released Mercedes Citan is possibly a good shout. And one of the reasons for that, my words now not his, is you know Mercedes are going with this three years unlimited mileage uh, deal, which if you're a courier, instead of getting two years from a van and having to dump it, you're going to get three years and it's going to be Mercedes problem, whatever goes wrong. Yes, you're going to maybe have a little bit of van downtime, but the van Moby thing, which I need to do a video on at some point is just is just fantastic. They <laughs> they're beating everyone hands down on uh, how to help out van drivers. Anyway, um, so he goes on to say warranty wise, like the Citroen, but I think that Mercedes customer service care will be better than Citroen and possibly a bit cheaper. You pay your money and you take your chance. My initial experience is, in terms of friendliness from Citroen, they were great. They didn't really help me out. They cost my business a bunch of money. In terms of friendliness from Mercedes, they were much more sort of Germanic, even though it's a Scottish place that I went to. And it was a case of, yep, yeah, fine, done, cheerio, goodbye. You know what? That's all I need. I don't need to be friends with these people. So what's the best van for an Ubi? Well, you can start with a small van. Cheaper running costs, cheaper insurance, but you're limiting yourself on what you can do. You can move up through the ranks, get a medium wheelbase or something, a small wheelbase, a medium wheelbase, but then you're increasing your costs, but you increase the amount you get paid and you've got more work you can do because you can cover medium, small and sh well, medium, short and small vans. Or you move up to a long wheelbase or extra long wheelbase. Obviously, everything then increases, your running costs go higher and higher, but the amount you get paid goes higher and higher, and you can do every sort of work. Now, you could move up to a Luton, but at the minute, Lutons are ridiculously expensive to run, that you don't get paid that much more than an extra long wheelbase. They're hard to find a decent one in good condition, and they're just very expensive. If if you can't really drop down to the small van, short wheelbase, medium wheelbase sort of jobs because you just won't be getting enough to run that van. So I would personally recommend buying a long wheelbase. Now let's be more specific. So over the years I've driven Transits, Renault Masters, um, Vauxhall, whatever they're called, the big ones, um, Sprinters and Crafters. Now, the old, older shaped sprinters and the old shaped crafters, which are a similar shape with different headlights. Lovely, lovely, lovely vans to drive, comfortable. But nothing is, com is as comfy as this one that I'm in right now. A Volkswagen Crafter, a new shape. Well, this is a 2018, so it's the first year of the new shape, or 17, 18. And it's got the comfiest seats ever. It's got 337,000 miles on the clock. It's still running, it's doing a fantastic job. It's got four meters in the back and you can fit loads of stuff in it. And it's got a nice payload of about 1100 kilos with me in it and all my gear. So it would be more if I took some stuff out and lost some money. So I hope that helps. I would recommend a VW Craft along my base. Thank you, Roger. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you liked it. We'll maybe, catch, we'll maybe catch another one in a month or so. Haven't quite decided. You know, We've got a lot of other new formats coming into the YouTube um, framework, shall we say. And uh, yeah, most of all, I hope you enjoy it. If you're one of the guys that are on here, thank you very much for taking the time to send me the video. And I think it's a great resource for people who want to grab a bunch of opinions just from one place to go straight in. And... Uh, that's all I've got to say for this week. Uh, let's go back to getting out there, being safe. Please remember it is the winter time. Just ease off the pedal a wee bit. Make sure your tyre pressures are correct. Take 
take some warm clothes with you. If you do get stuck somewhere, you really don't want to be freezing cold with wet or damp feet. So have a spare pair of shoes or a pair of slippers, not Crocs and definitely not flip-flops. All the best, everyone. Have a great week and thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you.